So commit to getting that first part down now. Okay, that's really important. That's the first thing. Second thing is commit to each other. Okay, and every coach in every season stands in front of their team and they say that. You've probably heard that a thousand times. I didn't, I didn't come up with it. Somebody much smarter than me came up with it. But you probably hear that all the time. Okay, commit to each other. So you know what that means. Okay, but I'm going to tell you how you do it and why you do it. Okay, first thing is how you do it. How do you commit to each other? You spend time with one another. That's how you do it. It's really hard to commit to somebody if you don't know them. Right? Like just, you, you have to know them. You have to be around them. And you have this opportunity in these six weeks to spend time with one another. Because it's not as crazy as the fall will be. It's not as crazy as the spring will be. You have more free time in the summer. So commit to spending time with one another. And it doesn't mean you have to do full team gatherings all the time, but commit to spending time with every one of your teammates this summer in some form or fashion, because that's going to be important. Okay. So that's how you do it. That's how you commit to each other. You spend time with one another. And then the more you get to know someone, the more you want to want to commit to them. Okay. The second thing is why you do it. Why do you commit? Why commit to somebody? Why do you commit to each other? The journey we're going to go on is going to be challenging. And one of the biggest misconceptions about great teams or about teams that have a lot of success, people will talk about like family and culture and all those things. And they're true. And I, I believe in those, but they have all these buzzwords. They say, oh, we're family. Oh, we commit to each other, all that stuff. The misconception about that is people think a culture that's family, a culture that's successful, a culture that's nice and fun, that they never have any problems. So people in life search for things where they're never going to have any problems. Like you might search for a relationship like, oh, it's great. We never fight. They're either lying or they just have a fault. Like that's it. Like if you're in a relationship and you haven't fought yet, like you're either lying to me because you do fight and you're trying to keep up appearances. You don't, you don't lie because you know it's true. Or you just haven't fought yet. But conflict, conflict is a pivotal part of a successful team. Okay? There's no absence of conflict in successful teams. You know what there's an absence of? There's an absence of the conflict lingering. That's the difference. There's going to be conflict. You're going to be mad at me sometimes. I'm going to be mad at you sometimes. You're going to be mad at each other. There's going to be conflict. But the teams that have success, they don't allow the pettiness to linger. They don't allow it to fester. You have an argument with somebody. You have a, you have a, you have a, di a difference with somebody on the team. That's going to happen. Squash that thing, man, when it's over. All right? So know there's going to be conflict. It's a part of it. We have conflict almost every day. Right? But when we, when we get out of the meeting, we're together because we're committed to one another. And we don't let it linger. Like if we disagree about something, we disagree about something. But we don't, on, on Wednesday and on Friday, we don't have it still be there. Okay? So that's an important part. If you, you commit to one another so that when there is conflict, you're able to move past it. That's why you commit to someone else because you're going to have conflict. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Last thing. Commit to being in great shape. 